Index and Campus Pride Sports Index. How LGBTQ friendly is my campus? My name is Magda and I'm from Cognito and I'll be moderating today's webinar. And we also have with us our presenter, Shane from Campus Pride, uh, who will be discussing the Campus Pride Index and how you can use it on your campus. And just to give you a quick agenda for today's webinar, uh, Shane will be doing a quick introduction and then discussing the Campus Pride Index and the Campus Pride Sports Index. And then again at the end of the webinar, we will have some time for questions and answers. So if you have any questions, please feel free to type them into the GoToWebinar panel on the right-hand side of your screen. We also have uh, both the Campus Pride and Cognito Twitter handles and some hashtags on the bottom left side of the screen. So feel free to follow us on Twitter and give us a shout out if you're listening in on the webinar today. And so I will hand off to Shane. Shane, take it away. All right. Thank you very much today. I want to give a big uh, well, uh, thank you to Cognito and a welcome to all of you to our webinar today. Um, it is because of supporters like Cognito that we're able to offer uh, these webinars at no charge um, for all of your, uh, the attendees. So I want to make sure we express our appreciation to Cognito as one of our partners. Campus Pride uh, has been around since 2001. Uh, we're a national organization that works with LGBTQ and ally college student leaders and campus groups um, with a mission to create safer, uh, more LGBTQ-friendly colleges and universities. And uh, today you're going to learn about a tool that is actually free uh, from Campus Pride uh, to assist you um, in your efforts to create uh, stronger um, LGBT inclusive policies, programs, and practices. Uh, my name is Shane Winmeyer. I'm the Executive Director of Campus Pride. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Campus Pride has been around uh, for a while, since 2001. Uh, we work with nearly uh, 1,400 campuses annually. Uh, we have a variety of signature programs, uh, ranging from our leadership camp that we hold every July. Uh, our camp is in its ninth year. It's a five-day, five-night social justice camp uh, around leadership and uh, development of uh, safer campus communities. Uh, there's a track for undergraduate uh, student leaders uh, called Camp Pride, and there's a track for professionals who work with LGBTQ and ally students, uh, advisors, uh, faculty, staff, uh, and that is called the Advisor Boot Camp. Uh, and so that's one of our premier programs, along with the program that I'll be talking about today, which is the Campus Pride Index and the Campus Pride Sports Index. So um, one of the things that we talk about a lot in higher education is this notion of change. And it's not a surprise to many of us on the call that one thing that is constant on our campuses uh, is the change that our students who are LGBTQ and ally are bringing um, with them from high school. Um, and those changes relate to kind of their intersections of their identities, uh, the fact that they're not in silos of, of race and gender and sexuality and faith, um, that students actually bring a holistic self to the table uh, to our campuses. And um, that has been um, an area that campuses, I would say, in the last 10 years has been grappling with is how do we change the way that we talk about um, uh, LGBTQ issues that is more holistic, that recognizes that a student that is bisexual, you know, has a race, uh, they have faith, um, they come from uh, a different familial status, um, and you can't necessarily separate um, their sexual identity or their gender identity from their holistic self, and so. One of the things we're going to talk about today is how do we um, how do we create campuses that thrive uh, in this environment of change, and um, how do we assess our effectiveness uh, on LGBTQ uh, issues um, that impact um, all of our students. So one of the ways to both be effective or to mo to be the most effective uh, is um, to look at the research that currently exists around. LGBTQ students, uh, faculty, and staff. Um, that research, um, by and large, um, has been absent the last uh, you know decade or so, uh, specifically around LGBTQ populations, 
uh, across the nation. Uh, there's been many campuses that have done amazing campus climate studies. Uh, my a colleague, Dr. Sue Rankin, uh, Dr. Jenny Beeman, uh, are two of the leading uh, researchers when it comes to LGBTQ campus climate. And uh, I was lucky enough, uh, Campus Pride published in 2010, uh, really the most comprehensive um, report on the state of higher education for LGBTQ populations. And uh, that report was funded entirely through Campus Pride. Um, and there wasn't a lot of support uh, from uh, research foundations uh, out there to, uh, to find out what is the state of higher education for LGBTQ individuals. Um, so luckily, thanks to Dr. Rankin and Dr. Beeman, uh, we were able to self-fund a study, um, the most comprehensive study still to date, even though it's been um, five years now, that looks at LGBTQ populations. And so I want to share a little bit of some of the research that we learned uh, from the study uh, in hopes that you'll utilize this research uh, as a way to kind of open the door uh, to creating a safer campus climate. Uh, one of the things that we found uh, when we talk about change, when we talk about dynamics uh, on campus related to LGBTQ students, is that um, the more research we have, uh, along with the personal stories of LGBTQ students, the better we are to create action uh, amongst administrators, amongst the campus community. Uh, a few of the items that we learned from the study that I think are uh, relevant to today's um, webinar is that um, a quarter of the LGBTQ identified students, faculty, and staff experience harassment on their campus, um, you know, which impacts their ability to work or to learn uh, within that campus community. About 40% uh, um, of transgender students, faculty, and staff experience harassment. Um, it's not a surprise um, to, to myself and to many of my colleagues that trans uh, populations experience uh, a higher harassment uh, than lesbian, gay, bisexual uh, populations. And that was present and obviously evident in this research. Um, more than half the faculty, students, and staff on a campus uh, hid their sexual identity or their gender identity um, as a way to avoid intimidation. So we talk about uh, students coming out. We talk about faculty and staff coming out. Um, what we learned from this, this study is that still today, more than half of uh, these populations who are LGBTQ uh, you know, hide their sexual identity or their gender identity as a way to not have to deal with um, you know, the, the fear or the harassment of coming out. Uh, we also learned uh, through the research that uh, more than a third of all the transgender students, faculty and staff, uh, specifically 43%, and about 13% of LGBTQ respondents uh, feared for their physical safety. So it wasn't about being directly harassed. It was just the, the climate of fear that a transgender uh, or that an LGBTQ person felt uh, within the campus community. Uh, again, uh, another salient point that I think we must realize is that um, for our students of color who happen to be LGBTQ, uh, this was even higher of a percent, uh, percentage. Uh, so race ultimately plays a factor along with other intersections of identity when we talk about LGBTQ uh, and trans harassment uh, and fear of safety, uh, personal safety, physical safety on the campus. Um, one of the things that I think is particularly uh, important to note as we move forward with today's webinar on asking, is your campus LGBTQ friendly? Um, is this last uh, uh, piece of research. Um, I mentioned how personal stories, I mentioned how um, research helps push the door open. The other thing that will create action on your campus around LGBTQ concerns uh, is the bottom line of the campus. If you can make an argument that um, being LGBTQ friendly is ultimately good for business. Uh, it's good for business now and it's good for business in the future. Um, you know, our society is changing rapidly um, uh, in regards to LGBTQ uh, sensitivity, inclusion, um, laws, and policies. Um, and 
campuses also need to change rapidly. Um, this last piece of research says that a third of lesbian, gay, bisexual, uh, and uh, transgender students, uh, faculty and staff seriously considered leaving their campus as a result of the challenging climate. So what this uh, specific uh, point of research shares with us is that we have students, faculty, and staff that are impacted almost to the point where they were going to leave the campus um, because of the LGBTQ uh, negative climate. And so what's important about this is that gets back to that business argument I was just mentioning. Uh, one thing we don't know from the research are the students who actually left the campus as a result of the LGBTQ uh, and trans uh, negative climate. Um, we, we still don't know today on most campuses, um, you know, retention rates of out LGBTQ uh, students. And so one of the things I think is important to note for this conversation is that there is a business argument here around retention, around academic success of LGBTQ students. And one of the things I find interesting is that in higher education, we do track retention and academic success of our students of color, of our, um, our female uh, male students, uh, and how they identify their gender. We track success of fraternity and sorority members, um, of student athletes. Um, but still today, we don't take into consideration LGBTQ identity, and we fail and I want to repeat it again, we fail to realize that some of these students who may drop out or who may quit school because of one of the demographic boxes that we just shared. So for instance, a student of color who uh, doesn't persist, who maybe during their junior year um, transfers or leaves the campus, um, we mark the box related to the, person, the student of color, but we don't recognize that part of the reason it could have been a main reason. It could have been a secondary reason. But still, nonetheless, part of the reason why that student of color may have left the university is because they happen to be bisexual, or they happen to be transgender, or lesbian, or gay. And so one of the things we need to grapple with and we need to start talking about when we address LGBTQ safety and inclusion on campuses is this argument around academic success and retention and tracking those. Um, specifically for our LGBTQ populations and their intersections of identity that we already do track related to retention. I think that's a huge uh, point that will lead us into the future, creating safer, more LGBTQ inclusive communities. Um, and so I, I think it's important to note that. I also think, um, as per our discussion today, is your campus LGBTQ friendly? We have to realize that for some students, they enter the room as a, uh, a Latino uh, lesbian, a Latino lesbi lesbian, and for that student who's a Latino lesbian, her identity may be about at that moment her lesbian identity, or it may be about um, her Latina identity, and we can't tell the student what's most important. It's based on that student's experience and that student's perception. Um, so. Part of being LGBTQ friendly is also being friendly around um, other issues of harassment uh, and making sure that your campus, you know, has a strong racial justice perspective and gender justice perspective. Um, the other piece of research I want to share, and just to make this more interactive with you all, if you tweet at Campus Pride or at LGBTQ on campus um, during this uh, webinar, uh, we'll be giving away some free copies of the Campus Pride 2010 State of Higher Ed report, the one that I just reviewed, as well as the Campus Pride Athlete report that I'm going to be talking about. So just go on Twitter, um, if you have a Twitter account, and tweet um, maybe a quote or something that you've learned um, at Campus Pride or at LGBTQ on campus. And uh, we'll be happy um, at the end of the program to announce some winners that will be receiving free copies of both of these reports, uh, which are available on our website at campuspride.org uh, for a nominal charge. Um, as far as the athlete report, Campus Pride, again, was fortunate through um, our research team uh, to publish um, you know, one of the only national reports 
uh, around LGBT um, athleticism. And what we learned uh, was that one in four, uh, approximately a quarter of LGBTQ student athletes are pressured uh, to be silent about their sexual identity among teammates. So in the athletic world of intercollegiate athletics, um, there's still a lot of pressure to be quiet about these issues. We also learned that 21% of LGBTQ student athletes um, are targets of derogatory remarks uh, through email or social media, um, and that's nearly double uh, the amount of uh, you know, uh, derogatory remarks that a heterosexual teammate would face on campus. And so that campus pride aspect report um, has some valuable data in it that shapes what we're going to be talking about here shortly with the Campus Pride Sports Index, which is a new index that we're, um, we're uh, uh, launching this April. So on your screen now, you, you do see a picture of a, um, a, a famous pop star. Um, some of you may know her name. Um, it is Lady Gaga. And um, uh, just for a moment, um, flatter me and imagine if Lady Gaga were to come to your campus um, a lot of your queer LGBTQ students might be excited about that. Um, she's seen as a, you know, as a, um, you know, an anti-bullying voice. She's seen as a very inclusive voice when it comes to diversity. And um, imagine if she were to come and she brought her disco stick, because we all know she has a, a, a disco stick. And, and she flew in on her UFO, which she probably has one of those too. And she takes her disco stick and zaps up all the lesbian, gay, bi, trans, queer, questioning students, faculty, and staff who are out on your campus. If she takes them on her UFO and goes spinning off somewhere, and again, I do have a point to this. Um, if she were to do that, um, what I want you to ask yourself is, what is the commitment that is left behind for LGBTQ policies, programs, and practices, making sure that there is a campus life that is inclusive of LGBTQ experiences. Um, and I want you to just think about that for a moment. Some of your campuses may have institutionalized support services or programs that regardless of whether or not there's out LGBTQ students or a volunteer who happens to be the biology professor who is an out lesbian on campus, Without those people doing extra, because we have to keep in mind a student is there to go to school. They're not there necessarily to plan all the LGBTQ inclusive efforts on behalf of the administrators. Um, I want you to think about what would be left behind. And the answer for roughly about 88 to 90 percent of campuses is that while campuses want to be called LGBTQ friendly today, the reality is, is that most campuses don't have the policies, the programs, and the practices to create the foundation to be LGBTQ friendly. They may have a student group. They may have a safe zone program that some volunteer staff and faculty run along with the students. They may have a drag show. You know, they may even have one trans speaker who comes uh, to campus. Uh, you know every year or they, they, they recognize Transgender Awareness Days, um, you know, in, in November around Trans Day of Remembrance. You know, maybe you have all those things happening, but oftentimes those events and activities um, are happening on the backs of LGBTQ students, faculty, and staff, meaning that while your campus may feel like it's LGBTQ friendly, have you institutionalized the support, the programs and services to be LGBTQ friendly? Do you understand the benchmarks, uh, the national benchmarks of inclusion for LGBTQ uh, policy programs and practices? Um, today on college campuses, um, we would never think to put a football team out on a football field without a coach, without safety pads, uh, you know, without a helmet, but every day on college campuses, we put out lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, questioning, you know, college students, we put them out on campus to do the education, to be visible, to do all these programs and services 
without the support and the safety um, that needs to be an institutional mechanism that is the responsibility of the campus um, if it wants to be called LGBTQ friendly. It just can't rely on that by chance. So what Campus Pride did um, uh, in 2001 with a team of national researchers is we started developing the Campus Pride Index. So the Campus Pride Index can be found at campusprideindex.org. And right now, one of the reasons why we're doing this webinar is we are creating a new 2.0 version of the Campus Pride Index. And that will be rolling out here in April. And we'll talk about that um, in more detail. Um, but basically, the Campus Pride Index is an assessment tool on the back end where a team of student, faculty, and staff, which represents you know, campus diversity around LGBTQ issues, gets together, and they complete about 50 to 65 items on an assessment. Um, this assessment is basically uh, what researchers, um, our research team, and practitioners have created as a series of LGBTQ inclusive benchmarks nationally. And so you take this assessment, and then once you complete it, you receive a private confidential report that tells you, you know, where are you at when it comes to LGBTQ friendliness? And it tells you, you know, what you can do better, where you can improve, what resources can help you. Um, and then on the public side, if you choose to share it, which I think is interesting, we ask students to come out, we ask faculty and staff to come out on campus because it's good for, um, you know, the campus climate. What the index does is it tells the campus, you can also come out, right? And you can be a campus that values diversity by being out and visible. And campuses are sometimes challenged by that because they don't have the perfect score. Um, and even if they do have the perfect score, that doesn't mean that they, they have done everything that they can do for LGBTQ inclusiveness. So we'll revisit that here in a moment. Um, campus Pride also created um, a national college fair program that goes along with uh, the Campus Pride Index, where in person you can meet uh, LGBTQ uh, students uh, to recruit uh, to your campus. And remember how I told you that um, when we look at the bottom line, that's ultimately a way that we can create pressure and create opportunities for LGBTQ, uh, you know, um, development of services and greater support. This college fair program has been a great example of colleges that you know want to recruit and see it as a as a population that helps bring in more diversity uh, amongst its students. Um, actually, this March 19th, Campus Pride is doing an online college fair. It's the first ever um, in, in the nation to be an online college fair for LGBTQ specific students uh, who are looking at colleges that are inclusive and fair-minded. Um, and so um, you might want to check that out um, or ask questions at the end. I'd be happy to answer those. Um, currently, the Campus Pride Index, if you go to the page, um, you'll be able to search an index of 430 colleges that currently participate. Um, the questions are weighted. So a small campus and a large campus actually have an even playing field. Um, it's small, large, public, private. Uh, community colleges can actually opt out of up to three sections that typically two-year or non-residential campuses don't have housing. Maybe they don't have their own campus safety. So they can opt out of certain sections of the index. Um, you know, the campuses are rated on a five-star scale. Um, and they receive, like I said, a confidential report that goes into more detail. Now, there are approximately 600 campuses, roughly, that have taken uh, the Campus Pride uh, Index, um, but like I said, a little over 430 have actually come out and have shared that. Uh, what we find are campuses that are more religiously affiliated, um, you know, take part in the index and use the private report, but they may not share that information openly uh, by creating a profile page, which you'll find on the website. And, and we allow that. That's perfectly fine. Uh, we don't want to force any college to come out. But you can't expect there to be out gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender students on your campus if you, as a campus, can't come out. So if the college isn't willing to come out, it's hard to get students to come out, and nor should they feel comfortable doing so. 
Um, one of the things I think is fascinating when we talk about is your campus LGBTQ friendly is that over the years that the index has been around, um, which actually launched in 2006-2007, um, campuses that have participated, over 80% of those colleges have come back and improved their score um, year to year as a result of their participation and their engagement on how to be more LGBTQ friendly. Um, and so that's really, really important to recognize um, is that these campuses are actively engaged, they've created an action plan, and they are um, you know, working to be more inclusive um, as an LGBT friendly campus. Um, it allows a way, uh, these indexes or indices, um, allows ways for your uh, campus to connect uh, to prospective students. Um, oftentimes I hear from administrators, um, an LGBTQ student, how am I supposed to know who they are? They're invisible. Well, the index basically takes that invisible LGBTQ student uh, and makes them visible for recruiting and for marketing for your campus community. Um, it also sets set forth a national standard. Um, I mentioned the Campus Pride Sports Index is a new index that's coming online uh, this April. Uh, the sports index actually looks at intramural and rec sports, and it looks at um, uh, uh, intercollegiate athletics, so your NCAA types of sports. Um, and it provides a series of benchmarks and questions specific to your sports climate on campus, which what we find in the South and in certain campuses, one way to motivate change um, is to target communities that might, whether stereotypically or um, actual uh, perception, is that the campus in, uh, uh, athletics program might be more resistant to that change. And what we're finding is that you know, athletics wants to compete just like the rest of the campus, and we're seeing a lot of good strides um, you know, across the country with sports programs, uh, with uh, you know, athletes coming out in college. And so we want to take and highlight that progress, that positive uh, efforts that are going on uh, with the Campus Pride Sports Index. And you know, it prov you know, both of these indices provide an ongoing effective measurement uh, to help the campus become better. Uh, many campuses use the Campus Pride Index in their strategic plan to say in three years we want to move from three stars to four stars on the Campus Pride Index. And we're going to do so by implementing these three benchmarks, uh, these three policies, programs, and practices. Um, and lastly, um, the indices provide a way to advocate nationally by looking at the positive work that uh, is being done uh, around LGBTQ issues. Um, so I'm going to, um, in about another 10 minutes, I'm going to have some time for some Q&A. Um, this was meant to be uh, no longer than an hour uh, webinar today. Um, and so I want to make sure that you are thinking about some questions that you want to ask. and. Um, I also want to make sure that you're tweeting at Campus Pride and at LGBTQ on campus if you would like to have some free resources. We'll be giving out some free resources today uh, to the attending campuses. Um, we have approximately 101 uh, colleges on the line today, so we're very excited uh, that you all joined us. So the Campus Pride Index actually looks at eight areas of campus life. Again, these, this was a research team that uh, developed these benchmarks for inclusion. Uh, you can see the eight areas here, um, policy inclusion, uh, support and institutional commitment, uh, academic life, student life, housing and residence life, uh, campus safety, counseling and health, and recruitment and retention. Um, the housing and residence life, the campus safety, and counseling and health are typically the, the areas that a two-year college or a non-resident campus, they can opt out of one or three of those sections. We also, like I mentioned, we weight the different questions so it keeps it fair for a small versus a large campus, public and private and so forth. Um, same related to women's colleges and uh, different minority serving institutions. We wanted to create an even playing field. So the questions that you see on the index, don't assume uh, because you'd be incorrect that the 
questions are all weighted the same. Um, sometimes there are questions on the index that are uh, small weights that are meant to create discussion around intersectional uh, identities, uh, around uh, visibility and awareness of LGBTQ populations. So at the bottom here, um, if a college um, chooses not to come out, as I mentioned earlier, um, you can basically keep your scores and your private report. There's no charge. Um, we hope that every campus comes out, whether they have one star or five stars. Um, one of the things to keep in mind is that if you truly want to be LGBTQ friendly, if you want to be inclusive of LGBTQ students, then you should be willing to acknowledge that you have two stars and you're willing to become better, you're willing to work at it. Um, many campuses are in potentially uh, more conservative political um, areas of the country. Um, you know, Campus Pride is actually based in North Carolina in the South. So we understand the challenges of being in uh, more conservative climates. And we um, actually also <laughs> Uh, hope that you, you know, campuses realize that some students can't travel out of state, and so by having a campus that um, you know wants to uh, improve its LGBT friendliness and wants to be out on the index, the simple uh, you know act of coming out and being visible in itself is LGBT friendly, is LGBT uh, inclusive, um, and so I just want to make sure uh, you all understand that because I know that can be a difficulty. Uh, for some people, well, if we don't score a perfect score, then, um, you know, why should we come out? There are students out there that just want to know that you're visible and that you're willing to become better and that you plan on, uh, you know, uh, creating more programs and services. And those students, you know, want to be part of change. They want to help uh, campuses, um, you know, become more LGBTQ friendly. They shouldn't be the only ones doing it. It's the administrator's responsibility, but there's nothing wrong with a student-staff partnership to LGBTQ friendliness. Um, so then the sports index, which is new, um, and you can actually start taking that online now. We'll talk about that. But it looks at five areas of sports climate, um, policy inclusion, uh, student life, uh, training and education, uh, safety, and support and commitment. It's actually divided into two sections because some campuses have a different intercollegiate athletic uh, program than they do their collegiate recreation. So those may be two separate departments. They may be the same department. But either way, we broke those two sections up. Um, the same uh, concept that if your campus wants to take the assessment to figure out how you can become more LGBTQ friendly or what areas to improve, um, you can do so. And, um, you don't have to come out, but there will be a public search uh, page that if you do choose to come out, that your campus will be able to recruit out LGBTQ students. So the whole reason for this webinar today was to talk about how do you, um, you know, look at your campus, how do you view your campus, is it LGBTQ friendly? And I think a campus that today wants to be LGBTQ friendly has to admit that there is still always work to be done, especially around transgender students. Um, there's a, a very steep learning curve for many campuses around trans students. Um, we haven't even begun discussing asexual students or intersex students on many of our campuses or looking at gender um, fluidity or sexual fluidity as opposed to these labels and boxes that we um, have created for LGBTQ, which keep expanding. And so one of the things in asking yourself, is your campus LGBTQ friendly, is acknowledging that there's always work to be done. Uh, campus Pride through the Campus Pride Index and the Campus Pride Sports Index are two, two free tools. Um, they're two free tools that can help you create an action plan and a strategy to always be working much like we work on other aspects of diversity and inclusion on our campus, to always be working uh, on a plan and the implementation of a plan. So, you know, it allows you to recruit uh, prospective students, um, you know, strategize, uh, to interact with your administrators, um, for students to be heard, and also 
definitely create that action plan, which I'm going to show you how that's done here. Um, what typically happens if we can advance, there we go, um, in creating an action plan is you complete the survey, um, you review your score report, which if any um, of you on the call have done this, you get a 14-page private report. It has a number of resources. And you actually then, after looking at your report, say, you know what, we have 28 questions that we said no to. Here are six resources. You know, let's set up a consultation with Campus Pride. Let's discuss this, which we do free consultations. And let's think about what we can do over the next year. What can we, what can we do over the next three years? And what is really a long-term, maybe it's the state, um, maybe you're a state school and that, you know, it's just, it's not going to happen unless, you know, you get a new governor or get, you know, all new legislators. You know, there's certain things that, that you maybe can't control, but you can put on a long-term plan. But there's many things on the index that are short-term uh, that you can control in one year or three years and create changes. So you create that action plan with your team and you slowly start to implement. And trust me, your LGBTQ students, faculty and staff uh, who are involved in the process or who uh, kind of witness and see the work that you're doing, they're going to be more invested in the campus community. They're going to feel safer uh, because of the work that you're doing. So if we look at that research that we started out with that talked about transgender and LGB um, students uh, who felt unsafe, who were in fear on their campus, um, you know, one way that we can change the perception is by doing the work, by taking action. And so creating this action plan is, is part of that, that, that change. Um, example, um, Bloomsburg University of Pennsylvania, two and a half out of five stars overall, right? Not a surprise here if you look at the top. Um, their sexual orientation score was three out of five stars, right? Their gender identity and expression score is one out of five stars, right? So obviously, you know, the campus, you know, needs to focus more on its trans population. Um, Bloomsburg is not unlike any other campus. Um, many campuses score lower on gender identity and expression than sexual orientation because they've been working longer at LGB issues and they have trans issues. Um, the uh, index breaks it down into those eight factors. And you can see here that two of their lowest areas are academic life and campus safety. So the private report, which you don't see here, breaks this down into 14 pages. And it allows you under academic life to see what resources are available to you to make improvements. Um, you can do research on the campus pride site to see what peer institutions uh, potentially are doing the LGBTQ work that you, you don't have currently at your campus as far as being able to answer yes on the Campus Pride Index. And so this is the way that you do your research and start creating an action plan is identifying where you need to improve. And most campuses today, as I mentioned, want to be LGBTQ friendly, but they don't know how to get there, right? or they think by having a club or organization that they're LGBTQ friendly. I want you to have a great, vibrant LGBTQ student group, but just having a student group does not make you LGBTQ friendly. You need to have these policies, these programs, and practices in place uh, to have an institutional commitment to LGBTQ friendliness. Here's another example of a campus that has five, has five out of five stars, um, Syracuse University. Um, you know, obviously Syracuse um, has been doing some work here, but even Syracuse on the index, just because they have five out of five stars, doesn't mean that they're perfect or that they've reached kind of the end of the road and are all of a sudden LGBTQ friendly. Um, actually, in contrast, um, housing and residence life, they have four and a half out of five stars, and in recruitment and retention. One of the things that we're finding is that most campuses you know, are not doing the recruitment and retention work for LGBTQ populations like they are other student populations. So that's typically an area that is that is low on the Campus Pride Index and something that we're trying to encourage, mainly because we think as an organization that's when we when we win 
as far as creating more LGBT inclusive programs and services is when we start talking the language of academic success and implementing the actions for recruitment and retention efforts on our campus communities. And so um, the Campus Pride Index 2.0 that I mentioned, um, the questions have changed. So the campuses that are on the call now that um, uh, are taking the new Index 2.0 will recognize that their scores are probably going to go down. Uh, we have raised the benchmarks for LGBTQ inclusion um, on the um, Campus Pride Index 2.0. And so here's some examples of some of those questions. I'm not going to read through them all. You can actually print off all the questions on the Campus Pride Index uh, by going and creating an account, and you can review them for yourself. But those 2.0 questions, uh, the research team had not changed them in about six or seven years, so you can imagine that for trans populations, um, you know, LGBTQ populations, those questions have changed. Um, if we could move forward to the next slide. So the Campus Pride Sports Index is a new tool that will go online this April. You can also uh, create an account and start taking uh, those uh, assessment questions as a campus. You can print them off, like I said, um, and start viewing them. Uh, you can see two samples of questions here about, um, you know, policies um, related to collegiate recreation, um, as well as inclusive programming. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the actual questions, since there's roughly, you know, 50 to 60 of them in each of the two indices uh, that you can print out and review. Hopefully, after this call, you'll create a team of students, faculty, and staff and go ahead and create an account on the Campus Pride Index uh, to do so. Um, so here's another example of, of some of the questions from the Campus Pride Sports Index um, and so forth. I asked about, for instance, media communications uh, and if you have LGBT inclusion uh, in your team media guides, membership handbooks, uh, you have written policies around harassment and conduct, um, you know, do you have forms allowing LGBT self-identification if the student chooses? Um, there's a variety of, of questions here that the, again, the researchers um, and our practitioners in the sports arena um, have helped develop as kind of the benchmarks for inclusion in these areas. So uh, in, in getting us kind of full circle here, I think it's pretty clear um, that both of these resources, Campus Pride Index and the Campus Pride Sports Index, are, are tools that can help you create the roadmap uh, for inclusion. They can help build kind of the, the structure of your home on campus. And we all want people to feel welcome and included in our home. Uh, but before we can actually invite people in uh, to our home, we have to have you know the foundation, uh, the walls, uh, the roof of the house put on, and that's what the Campus Pride Index and the Campus Pride Sports Index does, is it allows you to build your home uh, so you can welcome LGBTQ students inside the home and have the foundation and the structures in place to, to make it LGBTQ friendly and inclusive. Um, how students feel inside your home is their perception. And, you know, the Campus Pride Index and the Campus Pride Sports Index does not measure perception, but you can trust me when I say that if you don't have the policies, the programs, and, and practices in place, then your perception is not going to be um, something that you can count on because ultimately you, you don't have the, the core services and the benchmarks in place to create LGBTQ inclusion um, and friendliness. Um, we have a number of individuals who have shared their impact uh, from the index. This quote is from Ted Lewis from University of Richmond. Um, he talks about how the um, benchmark uh, is really a way to advocate for new programs and services on campus. So you can actually use your assessment um, as a way to get more funding uh, for programs and services uh, on your campus, um, you know, to work with your campus pride sports uh, community, um, I'm sorry, to work with, 
with your sports community with the Campus Pride Sports Index. Um, this individual, Mark Travis Rivera, is a student at William Patterson University and uh, talks about how the research uh, for the top 25 um, led to their efforts uh, around crime prevention and working with their campus police. Um, we've had a number of success stories in working with the Campus Pride Index. Um, this one from Colleen uh, Doherty uh, from Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Delaware. Uh, in my work with high school students and GSAs, um, I make it a point to tell them about the Campus Pride Index as a way to find colleges that are LGBTQ friendly. So we have high school GSA advisors. We have individuals out there through our college fair program who are utilizing the Campus Pride Index to share with students about um, you know, how to find campuses like yours that want to be LGBTQ friendly. Um, I want to take a moment just to share the timeline and then turn it over to some Q&A. Um, you know, right now, a campus can go online and create an account and complete an assessment, uh, whether that be the Campus Pride Index or the Campus Pride Sports Index. Uh, starting in February, the private index reports will be available uh, for the new 2.0 system, as well as for the, the sports index. Um, March 31 is the deadline to complete the Campus Pride Index and the Campus Pride Sports Index. Um, that's in order to be included in the April public launch. So that's when we will be sharing the public launches in April. Uh, those campuses that have basically taken the assessment and said, yeah, I want to be out um, as LGBTQ friendly, uh, they will be in the public launch in April as long as they have completed it by March 31st. And then in July, on July 25th, that would be the deadline to be included in our back to school uh, promotion for the fall. So you, you do have a, a few um, uh, deadlines here to keep in mind. We would love to see as many campuses as possible uh, complete either the Campus Pride Index or the Campus Pride Sports Index prior to the March 31 date. And we have staff uh, who can assist you in doing that uh, in our office. Um, so that's important related to that timeline. So if we can advance to the next slide, please. There we go. This is the page for your dashboard. If you go to campusprideindex.org slash cp slash dashboard, you can actually create an account or log in to your current account here. You can have more than one user. So if you have three people from your campus who want to uh, create an account, all three of them can create an account. and will be under your campus name. So if Shane Winmeyer, uh, Tommy Feldman, and Rebby Kern uh, were all from the same campus, we can have access to the same account. But every individual has to go and create an account on this page, and then they're linked together. Um, so that way, each one of you could have a different uh, you know, part of the assessment to complete or complete it together. It's campuspredindex.org slash cp slash dashboard uh, is the direct URL for that. Um, and so that's important to note. Um, here's the information on the online college fair that's coming up March 19th. Uh, we still have a number of college spots open. Uh, we have roughly 45 colleges that have registered. And you have a booth and a live chat. We're going to be doing some Twitter chats that day. Um, we're expecting um, a number of students um, uh, to be with us that day who are looking at LGBTQ friendly campuses. So you can learn more about that at campuspride.org slash college fair. And then lastly, um, you know, I want to mention our partner Cognito. We partnered with them on a wonderful resource which can really um, help shape the perception and the, the ability for students, faculty, and staff to be allies to LGBTQ communities and to learn more. And that's with the LGBTQ on campus training, um, which um, we encourage you to check out uh, on their website uh, for LGBTQ on campus. Um, we just awarded uh, a grant uh, yesterday to two campuses, uh, uh, Harris, uh, Stowe University, sorry, Harris Stowe State University and North Carolina Central University. Um, to utilize uh, the LGBTQ on campus this next year. So keep an eye out for things like that as well. Um, 
And now I want to make sure we thank our advisory team and turn it over for questions. You can see here there's a number of organizations and individuals that have helped work on the Campus Pride Index and the Campus Pride Sports Index. So if we can open it up to questions, and remember to tweet at Campus Pride or at LGBTQ on campus if you um, would like some free resources today. Thank you so much, Shane. Uh, all incredibly useful and interesting information. We really appreciate you sharing this with our audience. And as Shane mentioned, we're now opening the floor up to uh, some Q&A. So if you have any questions, you can type them into the questions box on the GoToWebinar panel that's on the right-hand side of your screen. And while you're asking us some questions, we also have some questions for you. So I'll be launching a poll on your screen right now to see if your campus is currently uh, taking advantage of the, the Campus Pride Index. So you can go ahead and answer that. And I will pull up one question for Shane while we're getting your responses filling in here. So Shane, I know you mentioned the timeline for the, the index 2.0, um, but can schools complete this at any time during the year, and are there any costs affiliated with participation? Correct. So a campus may complete, or they may go in and edit their assessment at any time throughout the year. So if you've had some success recently, and it happened in the month of February, and you want access to go and um, you know mark yes and improve your score, you don't have to wait. Um, you just contact us, and we let you into your assessment, and you can update it or participate at any time throughout the year. There are no charges. Um, the only thing that there's a charge related to is the college fair program. And we ask colleges to help support the college fair program, because while it obviously pays for you know, the, the rent of the facility and, and our time and resources getting, you know, the students there that we can. Um, it also supports um, the Campus Pride Index and helps us offset the cost so we don't have to charge anyone uh, for using the Campus Pride Index. So it is all free. Excellent. Thank you, Shane. I'm going to go ahead and close that first poll question. So thank you, everyone, for answering. And we do have another question for you. So on a scale of from one to five, with five being on the high end, where would you rate your LGBTQ inclusiveness on your campus? So let me open up that poll for you, and I'll ask another question from our questions panel here. Uh, so does Campus Pride provide suggestions for each of those categories to help a school improve either gender expression or any of the other different sections of the Campus Pride Index? On the private report, actually, um, people really value that tool because it, it takes all the questions and puts your responses with it, and it suggests websites and places to go, articles, uh, research journals that can help you uh, improve in that area. So for instance, let's say under campus safety, um, you score two stars. It will actually list resources along with those questions and it will say, if you want to improve, here's where you need to go, or here's where you need to do more work. So it, it tries to help you in that regard. We also do individual consultations, which we've been doing more of. Um, those are free, and they're, they're on the phone uh, or Skype. If you want us to come to your campus, there are charges related to that. But we do free phone consultations to help campuses as well. Great. Thank you. And I'm going to go ahead and close this poll as well. I'm going to share the results so that you can kind of see what your, what your peers are saying about their LGBTQ friendliness and uh, knowing kind of going back to Shane's point about even if a campus has five stars, there's always room for improvement. So no matter where you are on this scale, there's always something that you can do to help increase that LGBTQ uh, friendliness on your campus. So we have one more question for you, and I'll continue to field some questions to Shane. So does your campus track retention and academic success of out LGBTQ students? So go ahead and launch that one. And let's see, Shane, are there legal resources that are available uh, for campuses to help support any policy changes uh, that they'd like to make on their campus? Did you say legal resources? Yes. So um, 
Yes and no. Um, there are, um, you know, NCLR, which is the National Center for Lesbian Rights, uh, does a lot of work uh, in the sports space around helping with Title IX uh, and things of that nature. Um, Land Illegal um, and the ACLU, we work with them on knowing your rights. Um, there, you know, when it comes to, you know, certain issues, it's really about your state government, um, which there's so much change happening right now, but the simple answer to your question is yes, we can put you in touch with other organizations who have legal resources related to LGBTQ concerns on campuses. That's the simple answer. The more difficult answer is that, you know, we're living in a time where it's quite complicated, where things are changing rapidly. Um, you know, gay marriage uh, will be, um, you know, same-sex marriage will be up at the Supreme Court uh, in June, and, you know, that's going to have an impact, obviously, on marriage, but it's also going to have a trickle-down impact, I think, on what other laws are implemented very quickly around employment discrimination, around trans protections, and so forth. And so I think we're going to be in a more complicated time uh, than we, we are right now in regards to quality of LGBTQ people. Um, I also believe that um, it's an amazing time to be LGBTQ or an ally to see all the change that's happening. So um, our goal is to keep the momentum moving forward to create safety for all students on campuses and make sure that at the end of the day, there's nothing that impedes the learning or the academic success of a student. Great, thank you. And I'm going to go ahead and close this open poll and share the results up on the screen for you all to see, just so you can see um, what, ha what is kind of the feeling here around with all your peers again. Um, let's see, and we have time for one more question, and any questions that have gone unanswered, I will certainly be sharing them with Shane. So if there's any questions that you have um, kind of in the next minute or two, we'll leave the questions panel open. And so Shane can reach out to, with responses to any questions that we're unable to answer just because of the time constraint. So one last question is, are there any quick tips that you have for the colleges and universities that are on this call that can make an immediate or a very short-term quick impact to help improve LGBTQ friendliness? I would say that the, the most important kind of immediate short-term impact effort that you can do would be, you know, really listening to your LGBTQ populations, you know, creating a forum where they can be heard, where they can share ideas, things that they would like to see that are different, and just take a moment to listen to your students to experience, um, you know, every day. Um, what it's like to be LGBTQ, um, particularly your trans students who you may not even know who they are, may not have any out trans students. Um, it's particularly isolating um, uh, for trans populations, for gender nonconforming young people. So I think listening to their needs would be a, a simple uh, you know, opportunity, a forum, making sure that Campus Police goes and visits with you know, underrepresented communities like LGBTQ students so they feel safe and can create a relationship there before something happens or before uh, some incident occurs. Those would be some short-term suggestions that I think are valuable. I also, just to relate to that last poll there around recruitment and retention efforts and if your campus tracks retention, um, Campus Pride on our website at campuspride.org actually has a page um, at campuspride.org slash T as in trans, P as in policy, and C as in clearinghouse. So campuspride.org slash TPC. And on that page, we actually have a hyperlink that, that lists the campuses that are asking optional LGBTQ identity questions on their, their post-enrollment or their pre-enrollment forms or their admission forms. Um, and so um, you can check that out at campuspride.org slash TPC, there's approximately about a dozen campuses that we're aware of that are beginning to ask optional LGBTQ identity questions for students who are already out, who are being admitted, or who enroll on their campus. Awesome. Thank you so much, Shane.
So we are unfortunately out of time for today's webinar. Again, we will leave the questions panel open for a few more minutes. So if you have any questions that we were unable to answer, we will certainly be sharing them back with Shane. And we will be sending out a copy of these slides, as well as the recording, to anyone who attended today's webinar, as well as holding another session uh, of this webinar next week on Wednesday at 1 PM. And we'll be including all of that registration information in the follow-up email. So you can feel free to share that with any of your colleagues that were unable to attend today's webinar. So thank you again so much, Shane and Campus Pride, for all of this really important and interesting information. And thank you to all of our colleges and universities who were on today's webinar. Um, thank you so much, and have a great afternoon. Thank you.